Okay, in this presentation we are going to look at the Weibull distribution, which is commonly used in financial applications, engineering applications, and actuarial applications. It comes up quite a lot in actuarial sciences. So it's a continuous probability distribution that is fairly similar to the exponential distribution in terms of construction. Well, you sort of see what I mean, actually, when we talk about the cumulative distribution function. Now, there's a number of ways of specifying it, but the way I will do so here is using C and K. Now, watch out for that, because what happens in a lot of textbooks, you would actually have lambda, which is 1 over C. So you might, it might be specified in terms of lambda and K, a shape parameter and scale parameter. So for a lot of financial and actuarial applications, they might it might be easier to work in terms of C and K because, well, that's what it is. So, claim amounts in a portfolio of insurance policies are assumed to follow a Weibull distribution. A quarter of the losses are below 15 and a quarter of the losses are above 80. So, what are we told there? The probability of X, where X is a Weibull random variable, less than or equal to 15 equals 0 0.25. And likewise, that's supposed to be a 5. And likewise, greater than, I'm going to go out a shot there, greater than x, greater than 80 is 0 0.25 as well. Probability of that, okay? So, explain why claim amounts from general insurance policies are typically modelled using Statistical distributions with heavy tails, okay, uh, estimate C and K for this particular example here, okay, with 15 and 80 as our quartiles, and determine whether or not this Weibull distribution has a heavier tail compared to the exponential distribution with parameter C, which is 1 over lambda, uh, by considering your estimate of K. Or, so essentially what how does the Weibull and the exponential distribution relate to each other in terms of, you know, when you consider the relevance of the K parameter? Okay, so um, this is a general, this is textbook stuff. So what we have here is the probability density function, okay? And I won't delve too much into that what I have here is the cumulative distribution function okay and this is sort of where we're getting to but you might notice it's ter in terms of lambda and k you can take a pause the screen if you want to have a look at those but I'll just keep moving because what I want really want to look at is down below again okay this part here the inverse of lambda is denoted C, and therefore we can re-express the cumulative distribution function as follows. Now, I get that it's a little bit hard to read, so what I'll do is using slightly different notation, I'll just write it out like that. Minus Cx to the power of k. Okay. So that is the probability, uh, the cumulative distribution function. Okay, so we have... Yeah, so that is actually how we will sort of address this question when we try to evaluate C and K or come up with estimates for C and K. Because essentially what we're told is the quartiles, the first and third quartile, 75% and 25%. Okay. So the first question is actually just actually why we would use distributions like this, like the Weibull distribution. Essentially, insurance claims are often very positively skewed with large claims, often several multiples of smaller claims okay so essentially long tail distributions like that so if you just just do a quick sketch of one a lot of really small claims and then a couple of really really large ones okay so just a long tail distribution like that positively skewed long tail distribution okay so moving to part B, uh, earlier on we were told that the probability of x less than or equal to 15 is 0 0.25 and that's the quartile and the other quartile was 80, the third quartile, okay, and the probability of that is 0 0.75. Now, so this is Q1 and Q3, 15 and 80, and we also have the cumulative distribution function 
that we just discussed previously. Now, just as a quick remark, when you're dealing with the likes of exponentials, it's the exponential distribution even, it's a good idea to have in your mind all the rules related to exponentials and also logarithms, because we're going to be using one here shortly. Now, so what we're going to do here is sort of start off with this expression here, 1 minus the exponential of minus c times 15 to the power of k, that is equal to 0 0.25. If we were to rearrange it, okay, what we would get here is c times 15 to the power of k is equal to minus log, well, that, actually, correctly, that's natural log there, or log of e, uh, natural log of 0 0.75. And for 80, using 80, the upper quartile, third quartile, we would similarly get something like c times 80 to the power of k is equal to minus log of 0 0.25. So what we have here is two expressions with two unknowns. So the simplest way to sort of get started with this is actually just see if we can divide out c by essentially looking at the ratio of the two expressions. So we have c to the power, uh, c times 15 to the power of k, divide that by c times 80 to the power of k, and what we could do is re-express that as 15 over 80 to the power of k. And that is the ratio of the terms on the other side of the equation, log of 0 0.75 divided by log of 0 0.25. Correctly, actually, we should have a minus sign on both sides, but that just cancels out. So overall, what we have here is 15 over 80 to the power of k, and that is equal to a bit of calculator work. If you were to work this expression out, you would get 0 0.207519. Now, this is where the law of logarithms comes in very handy, okay? So, just recall that the log of a to the power, I'll just leave, have it a to the power of k can be written as k times log of a, okay? So, that's what's happen, what happens here. I'll just sort of rub some of this stuff out. What we're going to do here is get the logarithm of this, log of 15 over 80 to the power of k, and let that equal to log of 0 0.207519, okay? So you can just disregard the stuff in the middle there. So essentially that's what we're doing, okay? So that is equal to that. And that can be written as, that expression there, oops, didn't mean to do that. That, th that expression there can be written as, k times log of 15 over 80 and that is equal to log of 0 0.207519 okay so essentially what we can do is divide both sides by log of 15 divided by 80 which is what we have here essentially okay so we have an expression there k equals log of 0 0.207519 divided by log of 15 over 80 bit of calculator work and what we end up with there is 0 0.9394, which is great, okay? And what happens is when we figure that out, when we calculate that out, what we can do is just substitute it back into one of our expressions up here. We know the value of C, or sorry, we know the value of K. So what we can do here is just divide it into one of our expressions here. This one, for example. Just rearrange that with the value of k and then just work out what the corresponding value would c would be. And in this case, c would be equal to 0 0.0226. So those are our two answers there, our two estimates for c and k. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Uh, that's it there, third time lucky. k we estimate to be 0 0.9394, c we estimate to be 0 0.0226. And that's that's really the job done. So uh, just as a, in a nutshell, what helped there re a lot was just knowing how to do logarithms. Always remember that ba basic stuff. Now the third part asks us about the relationship or the comparison between the Weibull distribution and the exponential distribution. So in this case, x is less than or equal to 1, okay? And it, that means that the Weibull distribution in this case has a heavier tail compared to the exponential distribution. So essentially, the question there really is the role of k when, when you want to compare it to the exponential distribution. So the exponential distribution is almost like a baseline case of the Weibull distribution, okay, where k is equal to 1. So it's a sort of specific case where k is equal to 1.
Okay, and you might compare the y bill distributions, various types of y bill distributions, as long as they have the same value c with the exponential distribution. So, okay, we'll leave it there.